Good morning guys, good morning. Today I'm here again at the uh, Arikok National Park and today we're gonna try to find yet another hidden beach. This map you can see Aruba in 1948 with some construction and now in 2009 it was well constructed. St. Nicholas, Oranjestad and Palm Beach and where we are is somewhere over here. So after getting my year pass uh, I am ready to start exploring the park again. Now, uh, you would assume that as a local, you know every part of this uh, national park, but you don't. Uh, there are still many places to explore and I'm excited to uh, show you guys today. Obviously some places that I've been many times before, but today I'll look for a couple that I haven't never been to. Uh -huh. no, no. <laughs> oh, wow. During my recent video from uh, the Parque Nacional Aricoc, we walked there over there at the Roitambu. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link up here so you can check it out now uh, when you take uh, this road it's about from the visitor center or the entrance the main entrance from the park to where we are heading it's about maybe 15 minutes drive uh, it's very scenic drive uh, part of Aruba maybe you haven't seen before and if you haven't you should take uh, a day to visit this park there are so many areas to, to visit uh, maybe you have been to for example uh, Conchi or what we call Conchi which for you maybe you know it as the natural pool that is now part of the park too and you do need to pay an entrance to get there uh, right now we are already into the dry season that's this is the beginning of the dry season so compared to even uh, maybe two months ago this was a lot more green uh, right now it is getting already quite dry you can see the plants are already uh, having a hard time uh, dealing with the with the drought uh, you can visit here with a regular car. I think I don't know if you guys can see but there's a car behind me So if you do rent a car you can come here, but you cannot go to the natural pool So for the natural pool you would need a 4x4 vehicle now they are not for uh, rent here at the park so you should rent one and come here with it now the ATV UTV and all of those vehicles are prohibited now uh, they have been prohibited uh, since 2020 and so either you can still take a tour to come here and or you can hike it also I do believe it's like a total of four hours of hiking more or less so it is a little bit far it's a little bit hard I would say but it is possible if you love hiking that is certainly a possibility
This is Plantage Prince. It was built around 1950 and was owned by the Prince family. And they used to have like a coconut plantation here. Uh, they use the underground waters in the vicinity of this area. Uh, but after I, what I understood is after a disease hit the island, uh, most of the uh, coconut trees, they uh, died away. They, they, they vanished basically, and it was mostly abandoned. Uh, there are still many trees around here that uh, you can clearly see that they are more green than the other vegetation, more on the top, but on the bottom, it's still green because of the underground waters that exist in this vicinity of, let's just say, Boca Prince, which, the, which means the uh, Boca Prince beach. I'm gonna explore and get a few shots for you guys. This house has a similarity to a typical Aruban house uh, that you can see around the island. There are still, I would say many of them. Some of them have been restored in the recent years. Now, I wanted to show you uh, this, which is probably was built apart from uh, the house uh, for like a kitchen that was very typical back then as well so everything is mostly ruined uh, obviously it wasn't part of the original uh, park the park was uh, open in uh, the year 2000 and yeah they just left it here they, it, it's part of our history you could say and they didn't want to tear it down it's part of the history of this area Now, cactus has to be one of the most impressive things on all of the planet, like with no, uh, like, uh, how do you say it? Uh, it can still grow here on the rock, just like that. Impressive. <laughs> Quite impressive. I'm not gonna continue for too long, but I did want to show you guys a part of it so there are several hiking trails and all, not all of them are in this uh, like the full sunlight so these are part of it now you do have to be always always on the lookout and be a little bit careful whenever you are in the park for snakes uh, now we have the uh, local rattlesnake which is endemic and we also have a an infestation I think you say of boas now, I haven't seen one here in the park but I'm sure that there could be and they the park rangers always try to catch them uh, and eradicate them as much as possible because they do tend to eat the other smaller animals that live here in the park and also the birds they eat the birds uh, eggs and such now this is another part of i believe what is the um prince plantage which is on the this side let me show you so i've come from uh, this road up here and now this is a little bit different this is it does seem like the houses that they used to build years years ago many many years ago which is what we call here Casa di Torta now it's uh, if you can see it it's like a mud house I think you can mostly translate it to like a mud house now this one is completely abandoned but you can see the constructions that they used to have here and also the roof also has some sort of mud that is uh you 
we don't have many of them left like these ones uh, i haven't seen one myself in a while oh here we can see so here we can see it a little bit better now probably where you live it is common maybe obviously in the past but here there aren't too many left that one could uh, come and see them now it's very very interesting let me get inside I hope there aren't any snakes in here you think so no snakes so you can see the roof So quite, quite interesting. I haven't seen one myself. I haven't been to this one. I don't believe I have. Now I don't know the story, the exact story on this one, but there are a couple of other parts of this uh, plantation. So this is an, uh, like a separate house. Unfortunately, they have not restored them, at least not to a state where we could say you could visit them and learn about the old Aruba. Now this is, I believe, still the Shoshora, which is the flower I ate during my first hike. You can see the aloe with the with the flowers uh aloe grows here there used to be a large large um plantation in the past it was part of our history i do believe in 1900 or so around that period a little bit before a little bit after we used to export lots and lots of aloe we still do but at a smaller uh amount more places to hike maybe i will do that one day but for this um for this vlog i'll keep this part uh so i finished this part and now we are going to go explore some other places i was a little bit difficult to get here with my car uh, but you could hike it it's not too bad from where we were in the the first part so I think it's, it, it could be like a 10 minute hike or so. We are now at the Fontaine Cave, which is one of the most important caves uh, on Aruba because of uh, paintings that date back to probably more than a thousand years by the Indians that inhabited the island. And uh, there are also uh, paintings or markings uh, of the 1800s up to, up to now, which were uh, done by, uh, well, people that lived here about two, 200 plus years ago. Let's check it out. Now, if you do want to visit the cave, this one uh, is open from 9 a.m. to 3.30. But when you are at the entrance of the park, ask them if this one is open. Sometimes it is closed if they don't have anyone and mask is required. This is the entrance of the cave i'm gonna wait for the guide and we could probably uh give us some explanation welcome to the national park and welcome to the fountain cave the name fountain fountain is came from the spring water that we have outside next to the cave later when we finish in here you can take a walk you go in the garden right next to the cave there you can see a nice spring water 
that water coming out from on the ground. That's why they said also that water might came, might came from the sea, filtered to the limestone. All the salt stay in the limestone and the water is keep pushing out nice and fresh. The cave itself is go about 1100 feet deep. It's like 250 meters, like a four mile. And we never go all the way in the cave because back there we have the fruit beds. We call it the long tongue fruit bed. And we protect those beds. That's why we never use lights in here because you know, beds doesn't like the light. If you look up here, all the red paintings, what you see on the top, they are the Indians drawings. And many of them, we do not know what they mean because they said that they are ceremony vision drawings. So it's hard for us to tell what they mean. One more thing about the painting is the color. The color they said that they used to get out from the iron oxide and they used to melt the iron oxide to make an ink out of it. And then they used to mix it up with a sap where they're getting from a tree named Brazil. So they mix those two together and they got a nice ink that can stay here, stay up here like forever. And our job here is to protect them so no one can touch them or scratch them off. So they are kind of like, you know, like history. And this is the only cave on the island that people can get so close to the drawings. So up here you can see some nice ones. Look at them here. You see that? They are some nice logo, nice imagination, nice whatever, but it's hard for us to tell what they mean. You can see like some handprint, you see that? This is handprint. And also here we have more handprint. And they said that the Indian used to be Short people, little people, small hand, like a buffalo. You see that? There you can see the eye, the beard, and the whole body. And it looks nice like a, like a bison. We don't have bison on the island. We have only white goat and white donkey. So this is the only one that we have on the island, and it is in the cave. Now, guys, you can hear, you can hear this body right here. That is, it's hollow because it's full of calcium carbonate. And now I will show you also how this cave was formed. If you look down right here, this nice formation, it got to be together with this one over here. And there you can see all of them. And there you can see that they look like the wave formation. Right now, if you pass over here with me, right up here, you can see like, a, is the sea level line on the wall? Right here where I'm pointing, we have a fossil seashell, a seashell, right? Fossil light in the wall. Also, we have some lava rocks, we call it the basalt rocks, together with the, white, the wave formation and the sea level line. Here you can see that this island really was on the water before. And they said that 90 million years ago that Aruba used to be pushing up from on the water. So it used to be like an eruption island. But now we got one happy island. And the other cave that we call Guadarikiri, that cave you can go way back and you not even need a light there because it's got the blowhole on the top where the light is shining in the cave. All right, and now you can go out into the garden and there you can see the spring water and then you can figure out why they was calling the fountain. And in the spring water, we got the fishes that eat the dead skin from under the people feet for do like a, like a pedicure in Aruba. All right, my friend, I hope you enjoy it and welcome to Aruba. Now, if you are at the Fontaine Cave as we were, uh, you can walk over here and well we where we will go to do what the uh, guy said uh, we are going to uh, see the uh, what would it be spring water like underground water I'm not sure the the name and the term in English but we're gonna get here and it should be interesting I have been here before but I haven't shown you guys this one and it's gotten pretty popular as well. Okay. 
Now, first of all, see how dry it was everywhere and now here it's all green and we have like plants that are not all that common every, uh, in other places probably banana trees and this is um, water that comes from underground now there are some fish I don't know if you can see them some large fish most of them are black and this is another part where you can uh, see the fish here look at how many fish there are everybody eats <laughs> oh my goodness now let's see if these eat too oh yeah <laughs> now there is a very specific reason why I've come here and that is to take off my shoes as the guide said and get my feet into the water now they call this the foot spa I've done it before but I'm afraid to do it again because this can get really ugly really fast Woo! <laughs> oh no <laughs> they will start eating your fungus your things here and there's a big one <laughs> I don't want that one <laughs> oh boy oh not that big one not that big one no not that big one <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> there are goats over here too. I was just gonna joke that I didn't wanna feed these uh, fish only on my feet. They might die, obviously, so I thought I'd bring some bread so they have some real food. Not food, foot, food. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> nobody's eating come on guys <laughs> why don't they eat this one <laughs> i don't think anybody nobody's eye nobody's eye if you are wondering this is also part of a plantation that didn't do well over the years the part of the house is over there I do believe it was still um, functional maybe a little bit before the park opened uh, maybe 25-30 years ago it might have still been uh, functional 